This roof has been the bane of our life. Um, out of all the projects we've done here, this has probably been the worst one. Not the roof in itself, the roof went on so well. You know, we had the help of Steve and Colston and it was brilliant. And um, I suppose we went, got into a full sense of security, really. We then had to do the haunching, uh, which is where the roof meets the wall, which is what I'm doing here now. A lot of people use zinc and mould it into the tiles so that any water coming off it just comes straight down. We couldn't afford zinc, we don't have the money for that. So um, we went the old fashioned way, which is to haunt it with um, lime mortar. We don't know what we're doing. Um, we've always been honest about that. Every project we do is a new learning for us. This certainly was. Um, we did the haunting, we put it on, we thought it was fine and then found underneath that we had leaks. So we had to take the whole lot off again. Um, and that was hard work. We did it a few weeks back and it was scorching hot and it was hard going getting it off. And we just was beside ourselves because we didn't know what the problem was. Now, it's amazing to think that this roof went on six months ago and we're still trying to get it airtight. So what we've done today is we took the old haunting off, we got a hose pipe and literally went inch by inch over the edge to find out where the leak was coming from. And we eventually found it. We think we found it anyway. So today I'm putting another haunting on and I'm being so careful to make sure that I've got gullies that run straight off of the roof and no water can get in. If this doesn't work, I don't know what we're gonna do. Um, we know that we need guttering above us on this roof but our roofer can't come for a, for a while yet. He, he needs scaffolding high enough to get him to chest height to the roof. And we don't have enough scaffolding for that. Now we're gonna borrow it off of Steve, but at the moment Steve's doing his roof. So it does mean that we're gonna to have to wait a little while to be able to get that done. But I really hope that by redoing the haunching and by getting the guttering on, it finishes this project because this is really, not only is it setting us back loads of time, we can't get on with anything inside until we sort this leak out. It's not like we could put any plasterboard ceilings up because it will just get ruined. So we need to get this sorted. But I think morale wise, we're just besides ourselves on what to do with it. It's the one project that we've done in three years that has had us jumping through hoops, had us going round and round in circles. And the worst thing is anybody will tell you that when you do a DIY job, when you do any job, if you do it wrong and you have to do it a second time, that's the worst. Because your heart isn't in it then, you're just fed up with it. And I think we are just so fed up with this haunting. So I really hope, Ted's had to go out today to a meeting. So I thought, right, just get it done, get it done. And let's just, fingers crossed, hope for the best. So yeah. We won't be able to know till about a couple of days time when it's gone off hard, perhaps three or four days. Once it's all gone off, we'll put the hose pipe on it again and uh, fingers crossed it works because we need to get on with this project. We're still living in a tent and three years without having a home to yourself. I think, I think that's a, li a little bit too far really. And we really are beginning to get fed up with it. We just need our own space and um, we really need it soon. So yeah, I'm gonna crack on and finish it.
amazing to think really that, you know, two years ago, I was so scared of heights. And to be honest with you, I still am. But I just feel so much more comfortable now getting up on the roof and, uh, and working up on the scaffolding. It's, it's crazy how you can really change things by conquering your fears. And um, I just remember back to that time a couple of years ago when Michael got me up on the uh, scaffolding when we was doing the roof over on the chateau and got me to put the final tile on. And I was petrified, absolutely petrified. And now there's me climbing up scaffolding, up a roofing ladder, not thinking twice about it. It's mad really, when you think what you can achieve. Anyway, final check up here, make your way down, and then we'll give it a couple of days to go off. And oh God, I hope it works. I really hope it works. But we won't know until then. So come back in a few days and we'll see how we get on. So with the haunting finished, it was now time to just sit and wait. So it's been two weeks since I did the haunching and um, we have had literally two weeks of rain. It's been absolutely crazy. But the good thing is we didn't need to put hose pipe on the roof. It's given us a good opportunity to test out whether the haunching has actually worked. So we're just going to go and have a check. Um, anything, baby? Nothing. Nothing? No water. No? No water. So I've been up here, and I have to be honest with you, everybody, I have to be honest, I've been in here every single day. <laughs> day and night. First thing in the morning, last thing at night, I've been in here. Because I just, it, I, I, I'm exasperated with this, this thing. This is one of those things, I think Elisa mentioned previously, that it's one of those things that has you know, so demoralising and so probably one of the worst jobs we've had, ever had to deal with. But where we have water coming in here, we don't have water coming in here. Just this is the area here where it was coming down and as you see the staining, it was got as far as here in certain areas. And this, this piece of wood, as you see, that's the, the colour it was, and now it's gone pr prematurely grey <laughs> because it has had so much water in it, and this one at the top. They are treated timbers, this is the thing. They are treated, pressure-treated timbers. So I had a conversation with a, a gentleman who understands all this business, and he said that if you had constant water for about a year, then you need to worry. Well, we haven't. However, we have had constant rain for the last two weeks and we have not had any water. And the brilliant thing is we've not had any water anywhere else on this wall. That is the brilliant thing. We knew we had a problem here. We thought we had a problem over there. But Lisa's done a fantastic job with the haunching and we did, we did the bitumen spray and then we did the haunching over the top of the bitumen spray and it seems to have worked. Um, I'd say this has set us back months. I, was, I refused to put any kind of ceiling up, it's pointless, it's pointless. Because you're just creating a problem for yourself down the line. But so to, to, for this to be fixed is just a mammoth job. And it's, it, it encourages us to get forward. We don't need a ceiling. 
We don't need anything else. We, what we need is a room so we can get out of the tent and be able to sleep in a room that we don't are not bombarded by bugs all night long, are not bombarded by wind and rain all night long. But it means that we are now moving forward as opposed to stagnating. So it means this is brilliant because it does mean that we can go forward with this. It's living in a tent now not having a permanent space to call our own for three years mm. has become a little bit tiresome now, isn't yeah, it? It's, yeah, yeah, the novelty's <laughs> worn off. Um, yeah, it, you know, uh, we, we're comfortable enough because the weather's better. Um, that's, always, that's always nice when you don't have to be freezing cold or to go outside, and, you know. But yes, it's a comfortable space would be nice. Somewhere to sit down, for instance. Yeah. Would be and nice. relax. And yeah, and to actually sit down as opposed to, you know, lying down in the tent and all that sort of business because it's the only place we've got clean and tidy. But, but yeah, brilliant. so we need to move on. So the best, so we're just going to recap as to what needs to go, what needs yeah. to happen now. Um, I'm putting my windows in, and that's fine. Lisa has raked out this entire wall behind us, you can see. 32 square metres in one day. 32 square metres in one day. Fantastic. Once she's done the wall here, then we can start, what I may do is start putting a panel in on the back here to get all this through. Um, then that'll be done. Um, we still need to decide what floor we're going to put on. We do. You know, I, I have a choice. Lisa has a choice. We're under negotiations. It's a bit like a big summit talks. And we have to s settle down. We're probably going to go, yeah, we might go to Geneva for that. Or we might go to the Seychelles <laughs> and have those summit talks as to what floor we're going to have. Um, oh, I wish. Yeah, it'd be so lovely. <laughs> so lovely. Um, what we do, you know, is, is, is elements there. We need to sort of aesthetics, really, for the, this chopping out the beam, putting in the big um, pillar in there. Doing the little windows again. That's mm. that's a job because I, you know, make women with the frames. Um, you know, they can all they can all be. We've got glass for them. We can cut single panes. They don't need to be double glazed right. units. They because they're so far in. They're not going to be. You know, it's not going to be a, a massive deal there. We need to think about. We're going to bite the bullet, everybody, and see if we can get our Veluxes. Because once we put, if we put our Velaxes in now, it's a hell of a lot easier than doing it, doing it with a ceiling in there and without your bracing in. So we're going to, hopefully, with the restaurant going the way it is, it gives us the wherewithal to maybe divert some funds to that. So, thinking about time scales, Yours. you know that I do like a bit of a deadline. You'd like a bit what of a deadline. What would you like the deadline to be on this? When do you think we're going to be able to get in here as a bedroom? I don't mean just putting the bed in here, I mean finishing, finishing up. Bedroom. Yeah, finishing up. So, um, well, we've got an almighty month in June of a lot of, lot of guests and obviously the restaurant running. Um, if we can get the Velaxes in and we can get the ceiling on, then it's a case of starting that process of the um, the, the the finishing finishing areas, you know, putting the door frame in, but doing this, that, and the other, um, getting our flooring in. I reckon, I'd say the end of June. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping the end of June. Cool. Uh, you know, it. We've got a lot of guests, but they. We. Which, what's nice is they're coming for extended periods, so they're coming for a week and and all that. So. That's the good thing, that they can be self-sufficient. We can start tarting this place up. Exciting. It is exciting. So, thank God, the roof is sorted. <laughs> Time to crack on. Yep. <laughs> See you all again soon. Take care. Don't forget, check out the Patreon page. And don't forget, we've still got Buy Me A Toll campaign going. Yeah, the like tiles will not be going on until October when the roofer can come. So after the summer season, the roof will be done. So there's still time to buy us a tile and have your name put up in the roof for the rest of 
well, the rest of the period that it's up there. <laughs> <laughs> for as long as it lasts. Well, yeah, hopefully that roof will be up there for a while. So your <laughs> name will be up there for a while. Anyway, see you all soon. Like and subscribe. Bye. Take care. If you would like to hit a ride with us on this adventure, then please check out our Patreon page. For just five euros a month, you can help support our project, receive behind the scenes footage, uncut videos, and have Zoom chats with me and Ted. Be part of the Monmania family on our Patreon only Facebook page, or make a one off donation via our PayPal page. All of the links are in the description. You will then know that your contribution helps to preserve a piece of world history. Join us next time. We'd also like to say a special thank you to everyone that's taken part in the Bias a Toll campaign for the medieval barn and everyone that's made a special donation. So here we go. So a big thank you to Michelle, Michelle. Alison Duke, Victoria Jones, Jill Warner, Janet Jenkins, Lena and Francis Audibrand, Ali and Jay, Shirley Westhead, Colin Parsons, Michaela Brook, Paul Barnett, Roy and Elaine. Anne Williams, Lindbergh family, Gaynor Jones, Tanya MB, Melody, Paula Kershaw, Vicky Lee, Cheryl, Paul Bombardier, Sarah Jane Brooke, Diane Wilson, Julie W, Laura Sheldon, Mary Ann Cornelia Blake, Mandy Hunt, Irene Maynard, Franz, Marlene, Bart, Inga, Eric Van der Wolf, Leslie, Sophie, Valentoni Abraham, Graham, Karen Schultz. Barbara Hamwell. Penny Ferrick Methian. Thank you so much to everybody. Take care. See you next time. And stop having weird names. <laughs> <laughs>